Welcome to Westminster College Center for Financial Wellness. This lesson is on adjusting transactions. In this lesson, we introduce another type of transaction. What is different about this type of transaction is the reason why they're created and the source of the event, what initiates it. We will use the accounting cycle to explain. The accounting cycle is a sequence of activities or steps that take place to record all accounting transaction. A simplified version of the accounting cycle is shown here. Based on this accounting cycle, the activity that we have been involved with thus far is number one, analyze source documents under here. That's what we've been doing all this time under this original heading. As you can see in an accounting system, several steps follow. More important, you can see that there is a second and third column. So adjusting and closing. And they have activities also. And what we're interested in here is the adjusting column. Note that the activities in their sequence are the same in this adjusted column as those in the original column, except for the one unique create financial statements that's in the adjusting column. And that's what causes us to create adjusting entries. Okay, there's a difference as to when and why original transactions versus adjusting transactions are recorded. Original transactions occur when an activity involving usually another entity happens, i.e. they sell stock to owners, they buy inventory from vendors, pay for expenses, sell services, etc. All of these are originating entries and will usually have source documents like invoices or cash receipts or contracts. And these transactions are happening all the time, every day, right now, as a matter of fact. We have been analyzing these types of transactions over here in the original column. Adjusting transactions are initiated internally. The adjusting entries occur when the company needs to create financial statements and, and because of the accrual accounting method requirements. While adjusting transactions may relate to original transactions, not all do. And again, ori the original entry does not initiate the adjustment. The need to create financials is what initiates these. Okay, this lesson will focus on analyzing adjusting entries. That's a lot of words. We're going to do a few of them and then we'll come back and talk about this concept. Okay. Most adjusting entries are necessary simply because of the passage of time or the use of assets. I have two examples here. Um, CSI buys $10,000 worth of supplies, enough that it's going to last for several years. Those supplies will be used up while running the company. In other words, they don't last forever, right? When CSI needs to create financial statements, it needs to know how much of the supplies have been used up and how much are still remaining. Because they have a supplies asset sitting in their balance sheet and they want to know the value of that asset. So suppose at the end of the year when financial statements are being created that um, there are $8,000 worth of supplies remaining. Well, that means that $2,000 worth of those supplies have been used up and must be expensed. That's an example of an adjusting entry. This transaction relates to the purchase of the supplies, but is created when the company needs to create financial statements. The vendor who sold the supplies doesn't care if CSI makes this adjusting transaction, only CSI cares. Okay, another example might be um, interest on a loan. If a $100,000 loan has annual simple interest of 4% um, with both the principal and the interest due in two years, 
then at the end of year one, interest expense must be accrued. That's the rent for loaning the money, right? This transaction is related to the loan, but the transaction is not is created internally. And again, the bank doesn't care if CSI or the, the company accrues that interest. It's just an internally needed step. In this lesson, we'll explore a few examples of adjusting transactions. Particularly, we will analyze the changes that these transactions cause to the financial statements. And then we'll step back and look at what the lack of creating these adjusting transactions would have on the financial statements. Uh, as in previous lessons, you will be actively participating in analyzing some business transactions. Please access, open, and save the CFW Adjusting Transactions Exercises Workbook. We will follow the same analysis methodology, first looking at the impact on the balance sheet accounts, and then determining if there's an impact on the income statement accounts. So pause your video now and access and review that workbook. All right, our first scenario for an adjusting transaction. On January 1st, CSI purchased a utility van for $50,000 cash. CSI estimates that the useful life of the van is 10 years and that after 10 years, it will have no salvage value, no residual value. They can't sell it for anything. What is the needed year-end adjustment? Okay, first of all, we're not concerned with the original purchase that would have already been reported. We just need that information to help us determine what the needed year-end adjustment is. The transaction to record the purchase of the van was done on January 1. We're at December 31st, presumably, okay? Okay, assuming that CSI just allocates an equal amount of the cost of the van to each useful year of the van's life, then it would use up $5,000 worth of the cost of the van. That's the 50,000 divided by 10 year life. So the asset previously set up must be decreased, whatever's in there. CSI used up that asset in order to run its business. It used up some of the internally generated equity claims, that means. All right, so I'm gonna skip over to the balance sheet equation that we'd be using. Okay, so you can see that we already have beginning balances. That's presenting that we've already had the original entry entered. We're concerned with adjusting this. So we have said that the van that we set up, the value of it is gone, not the value, excuse me. We have used up the cost, one-tenth of it, so 5,000. So I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the cost of that van to show that we've used it up. And this is just in running the business. And so we are actually using up some of the internally generated equity claims, aren't we? So retained earnings is likewise going to be reduced. If I look at my balance sheet equation, assets have gone down by 5,000, claims have gone down by 5,000, so I'm done. All right, so retained earnings change, so we have to ask our question, is this something that happens that should impact my income statement? Is this, is this an operations wealth generating or wealth consuming type activity? Well, yeah, they probably bought the van, it's part of, to run the business. Um, so they're using it up. And remember, using up assets is the definition of an expense. So on my income statement, I'm going to increase my expenses. And you remember that an increase in expenses causes a decrease in net income. Net income and retained earnings have changed exactly in the same method, way, and amount. So we are done. Okay, now let's look at this transaction. What's its impact on the financials? Our assets and our equity both decreased. 
Likewise, so did our net income, it decreased. So if CSI did not record this transaction, it would have overstated assets. It would have overstated retained earnings and it would have overstated net income if they had not done this adjusting transaction. All right, a couple of things I want to add, add to this scenario. The specific type of expense we are using here is called depreciation expense. That's the expense of, of using up long-term fixed assets like a van. Also, why, while we decreased the actual van account in our analysis, in actual accounting, we would have used a related account to the van and it's called accumulated depreciation. I just want you to hear those terms. So when you hear them again, you'll kind of understand what they're in relation to. Okay. Next transaction. On January 1, CSI purchased a CD, so a certificate of deposit and investment at the bank. The CD investment will mature in three years, at which time principal of 10,000 and 2% simple annual interest will be received. At year end, what's the adjusting entry that they need to create? Okay, again, the original journal entry or transaction is not our concern here. It just provides the details that we need to do the adjustment. In this case, in one year, since they purchased it January 1, the investment will have earned $10,000 times 2%, so $200 in interest revenue. All right, it says that the interest and the principal will be received at the end in three years. So CSI is not going to be receiving the cash at the end of the year. Instead, they'll have what's called a receivable. Remember accounts receivable, that was the asset we used for amounts that customers owe us. Also for this, we'll just have another receivable account. Let's view our balance sheet equation. And it looks like there's an interest receivable. That makes sense, asset account. All right, so the asset that they'll be receiving instead of cash is interest receivable and that asset will be going up. And at the same time, we think about it, this is going to be an internally earned um, activity. They're creating wealth. So our retained earnings should likewise go up. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my interest receivable by the 200 and my retained earnings by the 200. Okay, assets and claims again are in balance. My balance sheet equation balances. I'm good. All right, once again, retained earnings changed. So we need to further, further analyze to see if there is an income statement effect. Okay, well, it's not central to CSI's business probably. Earning interest is a very common business activity for all types of companies. The activity they are participating in is investing excess cash. And interest earnings are recorded in the income statement, along with other kinds of earnings like um, selling services or goods. So revenue will be the increase account that we're going to use because we're generating wealth. So re revenue will go up. If revenue goes up, that causes net income to go up. My net income and my retained earnings have the exact same impact, so I am done. Again, let's look at how this adjusting transaction changed CSI's financial statements. All right, assets went up, claims went up, internally generated claims, and then net income went up. So if CSI had not completed or entered this adjustment, um, assets would have been understated equity would have been understated as would net income. All right, last one. <clears throat> C 
CSI has a bi-weekly payroll of $5,000. At year end, 3,500 of salaries have been earned by employees, which will be paid after year end. Okay, this is a common thing. Um, it's common for pay periods not to correspond exactly with year end or month end. In other words, employees earn salaries in one period that will be paid another in another. But remember, just because a company didn't pay its employees doesn't mean that it doesn't record the salaries owed. Remember the accrual accounting method rules? Uh, we record revenues when earned and expenses when incurred are owed. Okay, since CSI owes this but has not been paid yet, CSI has a liability. So let's go look at our balance sheet equation. Has a liability to its employees. Now don't be tempted to think that employees are internal to the company. Employees are individual entities of their own. They are not the company. So CSI has a liability, an external claim. And it looks like we have an account right here, salaries payables, like a good liability account. And that's gonna increase, isn't it? So that's gonna be the $3,500 claim against the company. All right, so the other impact is that CSI will use internally generated wealth to pay its employees, right? So retained earnings will be the other account impacted. All right, this is a claims exchange. We have a, ne a zero net impact on claims. Assets have cl changed zero also. So we're done on the balance sheet equation. But retained earnings did change. So we've got to look at our income statement and figure out does this impact the income statement. And pretty obviously it does. I hope you understand that um, paying salaries is a normal operations expense. So on the income statement, my expenses will increase, which will cause my net income to decrease. And again, my net income and retained earnings have changed by the exact same amount and in the same manner. So we're done. Let's look at this transaction. What's its impact? Okay, liability claims increased, but equity claims decreased and net, and net income decreased. So if CSI did not record this adjusting transaction, it would have understated liabilities and overstated equity as well as net income. Okay, let's take a look at the total impact of the three adjustments we just made. This slide shows our balance sheet equation without the beginning balances. You'll notice I took them out. That's so we can focus just on the impact of the changes. Okay, without the three adjustments, you can see that assets would have been overstated by 4,800. In other words, we would not have recorded this decrease of the van and this increase to the interest receivable. So without the adjusting entry, we would have overstated our assets by 4,800. Okay, liabilities. Since we increased our liabilities through the adjustments, if we had not done that, we would have understated our liabilities by 3,500. And finally, both our equity claims and our net income both would have been overstated by 8,300 if we had not created these adjustments. So why require adjusting transactions? Well, the bottom line is to more correctly communicate the results of operations. That's why we do accrual method accounting. It provides a better view as to what the activity values we participated in during a period of time look like, what the results of them are. We try to ignore 
when cash was received or exchanged, we try to look at the impact over a period of time of what our operations were. That's what accrual accounting is trying to do. So that's why we do these adjustments. Um, and here we only did three small adjustments. The typical business will make many more and larger adjustments. So the impact on the financial statements will be significant. Okay, one last thing. The adjustments we did in this lesson are just examples. There are many other types of adjustments. For example, bad debts, warranties, pensions, interest expense, sales returns, and on and on. Our purpose here wasn't to learn all of these, but to get an overall understanding of what adjusting transactions are, how to analyze them, and why they're important. That is it for this lesson. So go ahead and take the related quiz to this section and good luck.